Hello and welcome. Today sees the release of DC Designs F14, which comes in two flavours, the A variant and the B variant. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have a quick outside walk around and then we'll um, jump into the cockpits. As you can see we've got wheel chocks, uh, engine covers, RBF tags everywhere, the uh, wings are in the fully stowed um, sweep back angle. Uh, we've got hydraulic droop on the elevators due to lack of hydraulic pressure and as standard on the F14 uh, the starboard engine on shutdown the engine exhaust is fully open and the port engine is fully closed. So um, now having looked that over we shall jump into the cockpit. So we'll start with pilot seat and anybody who owns the uh, DCS F14 will uh, be able to make a um, quick um, connection between the two obviously very very similar um, just to pre-warn anybody coming in from DCS the switches here uh, will not be exactly the same as in DCS but obvious uh, reasons uh, of limitations of the simulator and also due to there not being any live firing weapons of any kind on here so um, with the limitations uh, comes the need for uh, more switches for different things and DC designs have utilized that by um, using the spare switches to do different things so um, just have a quick look around you've got your two screens in front of you there um, with the HUD um, what would be your normally be your exhaust um, engine extinguisher um, pulleys are now um, fuel shut offs so you'll be using those on engine start up um, so the usual uh, layout um, indicated airspeed vertical velocity indicator rad alt um, barometric altitude um, artificial horizon a uh, G meter uh, compass radio stacks fuel um, uh, all your instrument readings in RPM temperatures so and so nozzles uh, nozzle um, uh, size and things like that and you've got your flaps uh, all your gear related issues here fuel here engine start up bits and pieces here obviously you've got your uh, throttles there with the speed brake flaps wing sweep um, autopilot is that section there these are your augmentation switches which you'll need for the, to power the uh, control services and we've got radios uh, all over the place here and then on the other side hook handle um, these are all your declutter and cluttering of the hard um, battery because there is no um, ground electric power at every airport here that this switch combined with this one here oh, no not this one sorry um, GPU those two combined will generate a um, electricity for the aircraft to be able to start um, so um, just bear that in mind also that um, uh, ground power units aren't at every airport so DC Designs have um, implemented um, its own power system um, a lot of you elitists out there won't like that because obviously you need your air start and your electric start uh, whereas this combines the two together um, so um, it is what it is unfortunately um, and then down here your, your lighting systems your canopy switches which um, Jester obviously doesn't exist in this uh, version of the F14 for Microsoft Flight Simulator so it's all manually done here and out here panel there um, you've got your um, generators uh, air conditioning and um, these switches at the back here that do uh, various different things. Now you saw that we had chocks and um, engine covers outside. So take flick that switch and this switch. And if we jump outside, now the aircraft no longer has any um, uh, engine covers or chocks. And then this switch here, if you own the aircraft carrier 
this will be one for you uh, you can have it chained down for that more authentic look of looking like it's on the deck of a carrier so um, I'll flip that one off and now we'll take a look at the back seat okay so we are now in the Rio seat or the rear intercept officers seat and uh, as you can see we've got radar here um, what would be radar um, and you've got two screens there for displaying different stuff and uh, cluttering decluttering of those screens um, altimeter uh, airspeed indicator and um, bearing compass time um, and you yeah, have various switches that you know, do things to you, know, you can make each station live um, amongst other things I've not delved too deeply into the back seat at the moment um, it'd be something for me to do at a later date um, but in purposes of this review I'm just going to quickly show you the, uh, the back seat oh, obviously more lighting here and then um, your different uh, audio bits and pieces, your radar um, and your, well actually no, that might be your counter measure suite there um, electronic counter measures and all that good stuff but yeah, that's the Rio seat um, again, modelled very well um, and obviously with the limitations um, different switches doing different things so, but yeah, that's the Rio seat, so we'll jump back into the front. Right, so before jumping into the front seat, um, I'm just going to quickly show you the loadout uh, for the aircraft. So obviously these are all your fuel tanks, and then as we scroll down, we come to the uh, obviously pilot and Rio uh, weights. But under here are your stations for weapons. So you've got the AIM-9s, so to, to basically do that, you Push in 190, that take off the zero. Um, put in 190, and then we'll carry a couple of AIM 54s. Uh, who doesn't love a Phoenix? So we'll put 1,000 there. go for the last two as well. So 1,000 there and 1,000 there. So we'll close that up and now you can see <coughs> underneath the aircraft I've got four phoenixes and on the pylons under the uh, glove box there is the, uh, the AIM-9s that I've added. So there you go, adding weapons as easy as that. For purposes of speeding up the um, review, uh, I've already got it started and got the systems online, so we're pretty much ready to go. But I thought I'd give you a quick look at the um, cockpit while we are here, um, before I start flying about and moving my head from side to side pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, the, the HUDs are lit up now, the, the screens are all lit up. Um, you can actually remove that there. So as you can see, we've got our... Um, and compass with our uh, icon in the center there. Uh, that's obviously Nellis there. Um, we can zoom out, um, zoom in on the range there, um, and various things, just the brightness and whatever you can fill about to your heart's content. Um, so yeah, that's the, the uh, pilot seat and we'll quickly jump in the back. Here we are in the uh, rear intercept officer seat. Well, everything's still alive. Got artific well, an artificial horizon there on the screen. Um, some type of um, radar scope there, and again, it's pretty much the same from the front. Um, altimeter is now reading 2,000 as in the front. So yeah, um, like I say, I've not delve too much into the back seat here so uh, it's something for me to look at for another time 
uh, wing sweepers automatically brought the wings forward uh, you can manually sweep them by lifting the um, wing sweep cover and um, adjusting it yourself so um, I'm going to jump back in the front we'll get taxi in and we'll go for a quick flight ok so um, we're going to taxi out now shouldn't be too far to go but I will speed it up for the takeoff and don't forget to take off your parking brake something I always tend to do all the time okay so we've taxied down uh, waiting to roll out onto the runway um, for those of you that are used to naval aircraft having a high gain low gain steering um, anything below around about 13 knots you'll have high gain steering on this aircraft so if you're on a deck of a carrier maneuvering around shouldn't be an issue um, anything over that then um, things get a little bit hairy so just um, that's another thing to take into account if you're going to be using this on the deck of a carrier just take your time and it's not a race unless of course it's a QRA of some sort and then obviously that's a different story but uh, yeah so uh, to keep it under 13 knots if you want to use high gain steering anything over that it, it will be a bit more sluggish so uh, we're going to roll out uh, what the plan is is to just um, go up towards uh, Creech Air Force Base or Indian Springs or Brazilian Field as it's known on here and um, climb up to altitude, do some manoeuvres and then land back at Nellis so um, yeah hold on to your butts so we'll have one more look around before take off Okay, everything looks good. Got a one notch of flap. Well, that doesn't look it. Uh, that's your second notch, and then that's your full flap. So, two, one. That's your usual takeoff. Um, if you've got a heavy load, obviously, if you're off a carrier, it's full flap, but um, from an airfield. And uh, another thing to take in is the um, uh, trim you might want to trim back ever so slightly before taking off because it does like to uh, dip its nose once you're off the ground so with that over let's um, let's light the fires Okay, and we're up in 145 knots or so and like I say you need to trim slightly until you start speeding up flaps up okay right over the stadium and then down towards Creech okay so I'm over Creech or Indian Springs Auxiliary whatever you want to call it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the speed down yeah, so throttle back and then uh, what I'm going to try and do is get it into the stall once it's in the stall I'm going to try and give it a boot full of rudder to the right uh, hopefully that'll disrupt the airflow into the engine and flame it out. But, uh, need to slow this thing down first as it is slippery. Okay. We'll get it below 130 knots. Great, I'm getting a reflection now. Fantastic. Right. Here we 
gate. That's a stall light appears up there. That's when I'm going to start giving it the rudder. Okay, so rudder. And we're in a spin. And we've got the compressor stall. The engine has shut down. Excellent. So we're just going to let ourselves dive down over 300 knots. So we've got some speed to play with. Get out of the out of the dive, and now we can concentrate on restarting our engine. Now what happens is uh, this gets reset, so you have to push that back in on engine start up. And what we're going to do is crank the right engine wait for the RPMs to build okay so that's enough now we're going to introduce the fuel flow and we should get a reignition there we go and the engines lit so now we're running on two again so yeah you can have a lot of fun uh, with the spin uh, with the compressor stalls, uh, trying to practice getting in and out of it. Um, have ha I've only had one that I've not been able to recover from, and that was a hell of a spin. Um, so yeah, it's unpredictable. It's not the same every time. Um, so it's good to see Creech. So we'll head back to Nellis and um, bring this one into land. So as you can see, it's very. Uh, Maneuverable, as you'd expect from a, a very powerful, very aerodynamic fighter like this. And the wings swept back yet? Nope. So we'll get the afterburners lit. Let's get the speed building up. Automatic wing sweep should kick in. It says auto up there. Here we go. This is where your wing sweep uh, gauge is. And we want to get it to around about 60. If we can, as full back as possible. There we go. Right, so it's full. So it wants to climb. So we'll trim out and come off burner. We want to use all the fuel up, get bingo, and not be able to get back to Nellis. So now we'll try and roll it. As you can see, the roll rate is has increased. Uh, we'll, get, we'll do a loop in it. Why not? Build the speed up. Wings are still swept back. Over 500 knots. We don't want to overstress it. So gentle pull back. See if I can get creep between the handles there. Nowhere near. <laughs> Throw back. Recover from the, uh, the loop. That's Vegas. Going to head in this direction. Start throttling back. some stuff. Right, well, I'll meet you at the end of the runway.
Oh, that was a bit hairy. I forgot that there was a bit of a side wind. Anyway, we're down. Whew. Let's taxi back to the ramp. So my verdict on the DC Designs F14A slash B. Well, um, for what's limited in the sim at the moment, I think it's um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's very manoeuvrable, fun to fly. Um, it's got a lot going on in the cockpit, both forward and back. Um, you can have different configurations, different weights. It has the ability to compress a stall. Um, flat spin so you can reenact your favorite scenes from Top Gun <laughs> and um, it l just looks awesome absolutely fantastic uh, I've got nothing negative to say about it um, let me think of something oh okay the slime lights for some reason I can't get these to turn off they seem to be lit no matter what um, other than that, I really can't think of anything that really is severe enough to cause any issues. I mean, I've not done any navigation in it or um, used any of the instruments for um, for flying of any any type. Uh, I just had, you know, only came out today, so and I've only had a limited amount of time to. Um, to review it, but from what I've seen so far, um, I have no complaints. Um, if something pops up in the future, I'll make a video of it, but until that day comes, this is what you'll get from me uh, until the next update. Um, truly fantastic. DC Designs have done very well. They've come a long way since they were 15, um, a very long way. Uh, uh, simply, um, this was made purely for this version of Flight Sim, and it, it, it fits in absolutely lovely. Um, and I can't wait to see more uh, military aircraft from them. Um, it just uh, it's another another great addition to the hangar. Uh, it, it, they, I mean, there you go. Um, is it worth the twenty four ninety nine? I would say so, um, especially with the uh, new free carrier that's coming in November. This has the ability to launch from and uh, to carriers. Um, I'm sure the integration will be there in the up in an update uh, in the future. I mean, we've only got to wait until November until that uh, until that's released. So, um, and we we also get the F-18 with that. Uh, and that'll be another thing to add um, to our our navy uh, aircraft on this version of flight sim, and uh, a great pairing they'll make. So um, until next time, I hope this has been of help. Um, links of where to buy uh, the module from will be in the description if you, if you can't find it in the in any of the stores um, I can't recommend it enough fantastic stuff brilliant um, so I uh, I will leave it there and um, take care and I'll catch you in the next one